What up? This is Rama Screen, and in the anticipation of To Catch a Killer arriving in theaters April 21, I'm here talking with one of the stars of this new film, Jovan Adepo. How are you, Jovan? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself, man? Good, good, good. Congratulations on the film. I don't know if you remember this, but I interviewed you for Fences about six or seven years ago. <laughs> oh, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Back then, every media outlet was calling you newcomer, 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 rising star, rising star. And now look at you. You've got so much under your belt uh, from Overlord, which I enjoyed, uh, to Thank Jack you. Ryan series. You were a badass in that. And to last year's acclaimed Babylon. And now to catch a killer, looking back, on these past seven, six years, um, how do you feel about how how far you've come so far as an actor? Um, I'm, I'm really, I feel just really blessed and uh, and fortunate to have gotten the opportunities that I have, man. I think I think uh, doing Fences was such an important thing for me uh, to get to work with Denzel and Viola and learn so much from them and the rest of my castmates. Uh, so to be able to kind of look back when I can, because I, I try to do that once in a while and just reflect on what I learned from them and how I kind of incorporated it into uh, into how I chose my roles and how I performed them and just how I carried myself um, in this industry. I think uh, I, I'm proud of the work that I've done and I still have that fire to keep to keep growing as an actor. And uh, as you said, it's it's been six or seven years and for an actor's career, that's that's very early. And uh, so I'm still trying to, you know, pave a a long and <laughs> illustrious uh, career. So that's the mission. So we'll see what happens. Yes, indeed. And in this latest one, To Catch a Killer, you played FBI agent Mackenzie, who closely works with uh, Ben's character, who recruited Shailene's character to hunt mm -hmm. down a gunman that's been terrorizing Baltimore. Jovan, was this your first venture into the investigative crime thriller or detective story? If so, what was that experience like for you and what was your initial reaction when you first read Damien's script? Well, I was a big fan of Damien anyway. I think Wild Tales is one of the greatest projects that I've seen. Um, and I know that he has a huge fan base and he's just a brilliant filmmaker. So that alone, I was really excited to uh, to jump in. And once I read the script, I really appreciated seeing how each of these people who are all, all involved in law enforcement in their own way all have their own personalities. I think it's a dangerous thing and kind of, and it can uh, run the risk of being boring when you're playing a cop because then a lot of people ask you, well, who is this person? And you're like, he's a cop. He's a cop that doesn't play any mess. He's a badass. Instead of having somebody that's well-painted and multi-layered, I think um, Damien just created characters that were fun to play because there were always levels and conversations and levels and the things that they were doing. And I was lucky because I have a, a, one of my closest um, childhood best friends is an FBI agent. Um, so I was able to kind of pick his brain, which was fun. And I think he enjoyed it too. He just now, now he just tells his kids that, you know, the character I'm playing is based off of him. And it's just like, okay, man, you gotta let him have that. But, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun to get to play uh, different roles like this one. That's actually what my next question. Did you shadow a, an FBI agent? Apparently you learned from your friend. I mean, uh, was there a consultant on the set? How did you get to play this uh, Mackenzie so accurately? Uh, we did have uh, consultants on, uh, on set, but uh, a lot of this was more, just uh, performance-based work as far as what I did in, in, the, in, the, in the film. So this was really a time that I took to pick my friend's brain apart just about how he feels day-to-day -day at his job. Is it as meticulous? Is there a lot of paperwork? Are you able to, like, what's the language? Are you able to speak more, I guess, um, casual with your colleagues? There's everything, like, you know, some of the cop procedurals is everything's by the book. Even if you're asking if you can borrow someone's pen, it's like, can I borrow a pen? It's never like, hey, buddy, how you doing? And uh, and he was expressing to me just how how tight everyone was in his uh, particular grouping, because uh, he's in Virginia. Um, and uh, everything was just a bit more personable, I guess. Um, so it's it was cool to get to spend that time with him and talk about the weapons that he uses and all that stuff. And, and Damien is so obsessive about really nailing it that he made sure that everything was legitimate and, and on the book. And so I think it just helped me kind of fall into it and believe it when I put all my stuff on, you know, and it was really cool. Well, and you look at that. This is the second filmmaker with the name Damien that you work with. Right. That's awesome. <laughs> right. Couldn't plan no. that if I tried. <laughs> exactly. Uh, two scenes in this film involving you that stood out for me when your character or you were scavenging through that mountain pile of garbage to find the evidence. And then the, uh, the bl bloody massive shootout at the convenience store. Mm -hmm. um, what were the challenges of executing that shootout? That was very intense. It's just that because it was so intense and there were so uh, so many moving parts and a lot of it was about timing. Mm. Um, it was it was a bit of a challenge um, to really kind of nail it and make it look as 
as uh, complete and realistic as possible. But again, with Damien at the helm, I mean, you just trust the person that's that's running the ship. And, and like, again, we had so many people there. The stunt team was amazing. And all of the other actors who were all involved in that scene were all dedicated to making it feel intense and real for the audience. So, you know, it's cool. Again, it's cool when you have everybody on the team, like on the same accord and all wanting to do uh, do a great job. I've met Shailene a couple of times. Shailene, uh, I've interviewed her, lovely woman, lovely chatting with her. I've yes. never met Ben. Uh, looking forward to meeting him someday. Um, he strikes me as a very serious person, although is he though. What was your experience working with both Shailene and Ben on this film? It was amazing. I always, I always get really excited when I get a chance to work with people that I'm huge fans of. Um, it's so funny because I think I would think that most people would think Shailene was the serious one because she can be very like, you know, she's, yeah. you've seen the movie, even how she uh, 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 plays uh, Eleanor, she's very uh, focused and, and driven, but they're both very fun to be around. I think we all had an understanding that like the work is going to be the work and we were all dedicated to it. But, you know, in between setups and, you know, the downtime that we had and even days off and things like that, it was really nice to get to spend time with them when we could. Because during that time, I believe it was like, not the middle of the pandemic, but it was still kind of when all the different cities and countries or whatever were getting their kind of regulations in order. So we weren't able to be out as much as we wanted. Uh, we shot that in Montreal. Um, so it was kind of tough, but you know, it was fun. It was fun. And I would work with them again and again. And Ben specifically is, is super funny and very light. And you know, when he loves listening to his music on set, but when it's time to tap in, he can do it with like with the snap of a finger. And, and Shailene can as well, because they're both pros, so. Obviously, this movie also highlights some uh, shortcomings or misguided principles of uh, criminal profiling. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I think that, uh, you know, it's it's kind of a testament to not every uh, kind of outline or structure or cookie cutter fitting everyone's personality. I think mm -hmm. that that is the importance of all of law enforcement to be well trained on how to survey everything about a situation and about the people that they're suspecting of doing the crimes i think it's just really really important to be thorough uh, in your investigation and you know as much as we have going on it seems like every day when it comes to you know gun you know gun violence and things like that i think all we need to do is get better regulations in order but also have law enforcement that are prepared to really make sure that no stone goes unturned and that they can do everything they can to keep everyone safe Jovan, I, I, you know, I can't let you go without mentioning your next project. I'm excited about Welcome to Derry. Oh, yeah. It's a prequel course. to the It franchise. Congratulations, by the way. Thank what you. can you tease us? What are you allowed to tell us about what your role is in that show? I am not allowed to tell you guys anything. <laughs> <laughs> and they've made it very, they've made that very uh, clear to me because I'm so, I'm a fan of the, of the book and the movies, the original, you know, with Tim Curry and the newer ones. So I'm a fan of that franchise and, I'm a fan of Andy and, and his producing partner, Barbara, and the entire creative team behind this because they respect the material so much and they're such um, such fans of it. Did I lose you? Uh, and they're such, uh, they're such fans of it that you can't really go wrong with what they're doing because they know the mythology behind it. And I just think, um, you know, obviously I see a couple of comments on my Instagram and on the HBO Instagram about like, oh, what's the story going to be? Does this make sense? And I will say to audience members and fans of the mythology that it's the same creative team behind the film. You got to trust that they know what they're doing. You know what I mean? Like, and I think a lot of fans are kind of trying to control the ship and it's like, it's not yours to control. If you're a fan, you will get to see it when it comes out, but trust the story makes sense and it works. They know what they're doing. They're not just making up some random thing, you know? Uh, so it'll be fun. I'm so excited. I'm so fair enough. Fair enough. And for my fans at home, everybody go check out To Catch a Killer arriving in theaters April 21. Jovan, thank you so much for talking to me and congratulations. Thank you so much and talk to you again soon, I'm sure.